Hey, it's Jeff McNichol down here at Mom's Music, 1900 Melwood Avenue. And I was just thinking, when I was a kid, the magic was at Frankfurt Avenue, the Mom's Music at Frankfurt Avenue. And I used to beg people to get a ride down there just to hang out with the guys and see all the cool gear. Now that I'm the owner of this store, it's like a dream come true. We're recreating the magic with the vibe that we used to have at the old store. We're carrying all the gear that you're going to possibly want. We're giving you the outstanding service and personal attention that you deserve. Yeah, so we've got the great guitar shop here. We're carrying USA Fender, USA Gibson, Paul Reed Smith, Gretsch, Jackson, Charvel, anything you could possibly want. We're going to have it for you. Mom's is and always will be Louisville's music store. Thank you for tuning in to The Metal Forge. I am Mark Jackson, and I am your host. The premise of the show is pretty simple. Awesome interviews and awesome music. If you want to contact me, hit me up at MetalForgeRadio at gmail.com or visit the website, MetalForgeRadio.com. And now, let's get this show on the road. Hey, thank you all for tuning in to The Metal Forge this week. I'm Mark Jackson. I'm your host. We are here we are one. No, wait, that's a Kiss lyric, I think. Anyways, whatever. Blazing Wright from Philly is here with me, and we're going to be talking some shop on some awesome Pennsylvania metal. I think it's super rad, because just like the PDX, the Portland scene, Pennsylvania seems like it's a super fucking hotbed of metal these days. That's so cool, because so many awesome bands are coming out of that area. But we're going to get to that here in just a few minutes, though. I do want to say what an awesome last few weeks it's been here at the Metal Forge. Some new Patreon subscribers, the YouTube views, they're starting to come in as well. I'm currently in talks with a couple of people to have some new Metal Forge shirts, patches, and some other things going on. Oh, and the big thing, I'm actually starting to take submissions for the Metal Forge sampler compilation album. So if you're in a band and that sounds cool to you, hit me up at metalforgeradio at gmail.com and put mfcomp in the subject line. And I will get back to you momentarily. We can talk about licensing and all that stuff. But yes, that is supposedly... We're trying to get it worked out to where it's going to be a real thing here soon. Before the end of the year, for sure. Uh, I'm starting to like these uh, weekly questions. And by the looks of it, you guys are liking them too. Which, so cool for that, and thank you so much. Last week, I asked, What is your best concert experience? Brother Todd from the Deacons of Doom said he was able to see DMX and Cash Money... DMX came out from beneath the stage and Cash Money came out from a helicopter. Dude, that's so sick. Ruminate on that. Uh, Caitlin replied, when she saw Breaking Benjamin and they stopped the concert to kick a guy out who was being an asshole. And I'm going to say yes and kudos to them for that because if somebody's out in the crowd being a fucking dick, it's the singer's job to sit there and be, to stop the show and say, hey, dude, stop being a fucking dick and to have them removed. That's that's total kudos to that guy. Metal Warlord. Maiden outside at night in a thunderstorm. That's totally rad shit. I've been to two concerts ever where it has rained. OzFest 2000. And then it immediately got so fucking humid I thought I was going to die. And Metallica back in 2017 in St. Louis. It was horrible because there was a lightning storm and we didn't know if the show was actually going to happen because of that because it was a stadium, of course. And I was just so fucking drenched and miserable. The show was great. James sidekicked a fucking the acoustic stand because it wasn't working right. So, <laughs> so fucking drenched, though. I, I walked from the hotel to there and it was so bad. <laughs> I immediately just like died as soon as I got back to the room. Ultimate Power Corrupts. Slayer playing Seasons in the Abyss in its entirety and Bolt Thrower at Maryland Death Fest. That's super fucking killer, dude. Uh, I saw Slayer once and it was in an amphitheater here in Indiana. It's uh, the old Deer Creek. It's called something else now. Uh, they complete, The fans completely ripped up the grass portion of the seating. And nothing but grass and trash and fires were fucking 
grass and trash flying through the air. It was fucking amazing. And it was such the fucking... It, like, to that point was like the best concert I'd ever seen in my life. Because it was just so fucking brutal. I don't even think people do that at shows anymore. Maxwell Jeffries from Underking says he got to see Ghost at Bloodstock in 2017. He said it was an absolutely incredible gig and he was able to see Airborne at the Manchester Ritz. Personally, I've never seen Airborne. Not ever been, really been a big fan of them. Probably have to uh, get more into that. Uh, but Ghost, I saw them around the same time uh, here in America. And it was super fucking rad. I was never really a Ghost fan. They put on an amazing performance. I was surprised. Completely surprised. And Courtney says, Prince. I get that. You know, I've heard how much of a tool he could be backstage. But, you know, I really wish I was able to see him before he passed away. Dude was crazy as shit on performing. Uh, from just watching videos of him. One of my favorite videos is the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame where they were honoring George Harrison. And it was Jeff Lynne, Tom Petty, Prince, and a slew of other fucking people playing While My Guitar Gently Weeps. And Prince just starts ripping the solo in the song, right? And they trade off a couple of times. And by the time at the end of the song, he just sits there and he takes off his Telecaster and he just throws it in the air and walks off stage like in a strut as soon as he was done soloing. And I was like, wow, that's pretty fucking cool. But yeah, like I said, I wish I was able to see him before he passed away, but I didn't get a chance to. All right. This week's question is, how far have you traveled to see a band and who was it? Touring musicians, you're kind of disqualified from this question because we know you you travel for your gig, right? And you could see somebody in Germany that I wouldn't have been able to see on that tour or something if they never came to America. So anyways, maybe next week for you touring musicians out there. Thank you. Anyways, I do want to say one last thing before we uh, cruise in and listen to some music and talk to the dudes in Blazing Right. Please make sure you click the links to the sponsors and the bands below, because over the last year, it has been increasingly harder for bands with no shows to make anything from music. And a lot of these guys uh, depend on this for their living. So please click the links below, buy some music, buy some merch, so on and so forth. And also thank you to the sponsors, Mom's Music, Maxwell's House of Music. So go buy your gear, do whatever you want to do there. You know, you want a new acoustic guitar, go buy one from them. You want a ukulele, buy one from them. Uh, anything like that. Cigar box guitars, they have them. They have electrics, they have acoustics, they have bass, they have drum gear. You've heard the ads, you know, Mom's Music, Maxwell's House of Music. Check them out go to their websites. also want to thank the Wrestling Steve show. Uh, he did an awesome watch along this past week with the uh, NXT show, the main event, uh, Tommaso Ciampa and Volter for the UK Championship. Super fucking rad show. Go check it out. It's going to get weird podcast. They had Tony Vanetti, a local DJ here in the Louisville, Kentucky area. He's been on awesome radio. He's done cool shit over the last 30 years of his career. Check them out. It's super fun. It's going to get weird for sure. Also, the Night Demon Heavy Metal Podcast. Love those dudes, and I love being able to help support their, their cause as well. So, check them out. And Better Days Records. If you're here in the Louisville, Kentucky area, they have a Discogs link below in the description. Check them out. Buy some stuff from them. Buy some CDs. Buy some vinyl. They've got some awesome, killer, cool, fine shit. Like, I was in there just the other day, and I found a copy of the Rock and Roll Outlaw. Shout out if you know who that is. If you do, send me a message. Anyways... Let's listen to some Blazing Right. This is Into the Expanse. <laughs> All right, and that was Into the Expanse by Blazing Right. And I have the guys here on the line with me right now. Go, let's go around the room and introduce ourselves here. Uh, I'm Johnny. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Uh, I'm Pearson. What do you play, dog? Oh, shit. My bad. <laughs> um, Start over. Play, well, I play, yeah. All right. My name's Pearson, and I play uh, lead guitar, bass, and keyboards. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And yeah, French horn. What? <laughs> and piccolo. Yeah. I play a lot of shit. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I play lead guitar, bass, and keyboards on the album. So. Awesome. So we've got uh, Pearson, Johnny, Jim. And how are you guys doing today? You you doing all right? Yeah, doing good. 
Just chill. Thanks, thanks for having us, man. No, dude, thank you all for coming on the show this week. Tell everybody out in Metal Forge Land about Blazing Right. So we formed uh, probably a little over a year and a half ago. I had some songs, and uh, I've been playing in a band with Johnny already, so it just made sense. And Johnny had uh, sang in a, man- a band before us, and I really liked it a lot. So I figured uh, it would be good for us to team up. And then Pearson came along, and then, uh, yeah, we recorded our demo and put it out. Sold 100 cassettes pretty quick, and then uh, got picked up by Gates of Hell, and then they uh, agreed to put out our our new record. So things kind of moved pretty quickly, especially considering we're, you know, during the pandemic and everything. So we got kind of lucky. For sure, for sure. It looks like the uh, the EP came out last year in 2020. Help me with the name of it. It's in Latin, uh, so I, I have a hard time with it as well, but it's uh, Dolce Bellum in, in Expertise. Dolce Bellum and Expertis. Yeah, there, that sounds better. Definitely. There we go. <laughs> and, and for my stupid ass, uh, what does that translate to? Um, so it roughly means, uh, I guess, in in a easier way to put it, it's like it's a quote from this old philosopher, essentially explaining that war is seems romantic to those who haven't suffered through it or fought in war themselves. So it's kind of just like. Uh, you know, like a philosopher's take on glorifying war. And so it's it's a little bit tongue in cheek, but also a little bit uh, fitting with like the fantasy theme. Definitely. And, and it absolutely goes with the name Blazing Right to begin with. Let's just yeah, go exactly. ahead and say that. Anybody who doesn't know. Very important. For sure. It looks like here you all have a full length album coming out here in May called Endless Halls of Golden Totem. It should be out at the very end of May on Gates of Hell Records. So it's due out at the end of May. It looks like you've got eight tracks on there, roughly about 40 minutes of music. Tell us about that. How did it come about? What's the main inspiration um, point? I pretty much, since even before the um, EP came out, I was writing more songs. So as soon as that came out, we started working on uh, new songs and we finished the last song probably like a week or two before we recorded. So we, cause we, we couldn't rehearse a lot last year or the beginning of last year. Um, so we finally decided to just get together towards the end of last year and just, uh, really go through all these songs that, uh, I had written and just hammer them out. And then, you know, we were ready to go. So, uh, I'm pretty stoked on the way they came out. They sound so much more polished than the EP. Johnny's vocals sound so much better. Yeah, Pearson's yeah, solos. <laughs> Pearson solos are even more fucking shredder, so Hell yeah. we're, we're stoked. Hell yeah, that sounds awesome. You held off till the end of last year to kind of get together and do all this, get together to write and record and so on and so forth because of the pandemic. Other than that, how has it, the pandemic seriously affected what you all would be doing already? Probably playing live shows because we got to play one live show and uh, uh, it's just something that I feel like you know, we, we all have our own idea of like what we're going to do when we play live but for me personally, I, I would like it to be theatrical. I know Jim and Pearson can probably feel the same way and Haley, but, uh, you know, like we all have this idea of what we're going to be doing live and uh, all we can do is talk about it when we're practicing. You right. Know, and we, sometimes we say the crazy th- shit we would like to do, but, there, you know, who knows if that's ever going to happen. Right. You know? But well, I, for now, I'm con- I'm content just making the music in the basement. Okay. Well, and Cause we're not, we're not going to do any live show. Yeah. Not, not for any time coming for sure. I know that we, we're not really planning on trying to play anything. Like we, we have like a high expectation now, you know, like we, we don't want to be playing in a, in a basement or anything right now. Like we're, that's not what we're trying to do. We want to do something different. We, right. we want to play like festivals, you know, we don't want to be bullshitting and <laughs> we put too much time into this and we had dealt with too, too much to be doing that. For, you know, sure, for sure. Maybe we go. Who knows? And I get tired of it. It is kind of weird because we can't sell our merch in person. So there's dealing with like, trying to promote it online which is hard because you're not getting rid of physical copies in person at the show so that kind of sucks and it's also weird releasing music uh and you know your only outlet is the internet so you're hoping that people just take the time to listen to your stuff 
um, because that's really the only way they're going to hear it is just like taking the time to sit there and listen to a 40 minute album online, which we got pretty good feedback on our YouTube, uh, on the YouTube posting of our EP, which was kind of surprising. Um, cause me personally, I just never expect anyone to sit there and listen to the whole thing, but you know, it's, it's yeah. cool that people take the time to do that for new bands, you know? Definitely. Well, I mean, I think there's still a lot of people out there, uh, you know, cause I'm one of those guys where, I tend to listen to something in its entirety on a first sitting, whether that may be do it in the car or, you know, just try to set aside some time during the day to listen to at least something new from somebody, a full EP, an album, whatever the case may be. So definitely it is a very hard market these days when it is just the internet. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And it definitely takes, you know, we've had a lot of good feedback and um, we're glad that there's people like you out there. I mean, I'm the same way. I listen to the whole thing like all the way through, but everything is, there's just so much content out there. You can't expect people to sit there for forever. So, but it's cool. And I think, We've got enough good response from the EP, and uh, listening back to it now, like I can't wait for people to hear the new stuff because it's like it's just head and shoulders better, I think. Definitely, and I think that's a natural progression of music. Is one of those things where you have to have A to get to B to get to C. So with you all being in the same area, when it comes to writing, I understand a lot of people still do it at home. I mean, do you all all have to get together and do something, or is it one of those things where you're recording on your Focusrite rig and you're sending it to each other? That's mostly um, Jim. Me, me and him get together with the vocals because he writes the vocal parts. And I, I mean, you know, so we get together with that and we go over it together. Yeah, Jim writes pretty much everything. Um, and, you know, me and him will, like, exchange sound bites and stuff of riffs and then we'll, like, show up to practice and you know, just play off of those riffs and stuff. So, and then we're also learning riffs at practice as well. For sure. And obviously everybody has the, the, the jam room session type stuff where you, you start playing a riff that you're learning from each other and you're like, and you just go on this tangent, I'm sure. Yeah, definitely. Sometimes I'll have a riff and I have no idea what will go over it. And Pearson will just like at practice, just bang out some like insane. There's like a lot of those moments on the new album that, he, I had no idea for what would go over it, and he, he'll just go into some crazy yeah. shit that I didn't even like imagine, and then it'll just wind up being like the highlight of the song. So that's definitely happened a few times on this last record. Oh yeah, um, and it's cool because I'll have all the 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 songs, and then you know after like this time after we record, like Pearson will just take them, and then like a week or two later it'll just they'll just have all these crazy solos over it so that's always good to have a dude who can just take the songs and then uh go wild absolutely pearson was the uh, well i was playing bass at first and then i was like yo i want to sing and then we got pearson to play bass and then uh we couldn't find a guitarist because it's impossible and then uh Pearson started playing guitar and he just like was way better than we ever thought. He was like keeping a secret or something. Yeah, I don't know, man. I kind of, I kind of wanted somebody else to play guitar. Motherfucker. (laughs) (laughs) I I really did want somebody else to play lead guitar because I do like playing bass a lot. But I mean, I love playing guitar as well. I mean, I'm, I don't have an issue with that, and I've learned to like, you know, love playing guitar in this band too, man. So it's awesome, you know. And I love just playing these, like, these solos, like, all over the place. I mean, it's just a great time, so. Yeah, and he's way better at soloing than I am, so that really helps. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, I would definitely be a rhythm player because, you know, I'm, I'm a bass player anyways, so I get you. <laughs> and, and yeah. yes, it is fun to play bass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we do have a bass player now though we do we do he's coming he'll, he'll be around soon right right that's awesome all right i'm getting a flashing light here from the production team i think it's time we take a break before we get in trouble hi this is frank green from the it's gonna get weird podcast a podcast i host with scott clark you're gonna get everything you need on the podcast lots of laughs lots of music Some sports and maybe some inappropriate shit. Usually that's Scott's forte. Check it out. It's going to get weird. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and everywhere you get your podcasts online. It's going to get weird. I'm going to put my foot right in your ass. Oh! Hey! 
Hey, it's Mark Maxwell of Maxwell's House of Music. Listen, all this stuff is now available to purchase on our website. Check it out at maxwellshouseofmusic.com. We carry all the top brands, like Fender. We got Gibson. We also have basses. We've got ukuleles. We've got drums. We've got sound gear. We've got keyboards. What inspires your music? Oh, man. That's a pretty crazy question. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I guess I just like, I don't know. I feel like ideas just pop into my head and like very simple ones. And then I just go to my room and I don't know. As far as lyrically, that's kind of how it happens. Like a little, like a small little concept will pop into my head and then I'll type that down. And then like within the next week, I'll have like a whole song. Um, when it comes to like musically, uh, just listening to a lot of music helps. I get influenced from like anything I listen to. So pretty much I just try to listen to as much music as I can. And then I just sit down and I don't know, little, little riffs will come out and then I'll just expand, expand on them until it's a, it's a fully realized uh, thing. But I think listen. Listening to other music is probably the biggest thing that really gets the gets the juices flowing, I guess. Definitely. Like hearing a riff and, and saying, you know, what if you twisted it? And it essentially, I don't want to say reproduced because that kind of has a weird kind of context to it. But if you were applying your producer hat to another riff and saying, okay, well, what if you went to this F here instead of, you know, this, this G or something like that? How, how different would it make it sound and how much better would it sound type of stuff? And I think for me, it's cause I'm not really, I don't really list, I don't really know how to read music or like, I don't, but I think it's mainly like the, um, like the strategies, I guess is the best word to use. Like the way, the, the songs constructed or the way the riff is not necessarily like no for note, but just like a vibe of a riff. Uh, sure. It'll like send me off like, Oh, I want to do a song like that, that kind of a thing, you know? Definitely. I get that. I think that's a, a big part of it for most musicians is that we we're all influenced by each other. So it, oh, for sure. it absolutely relates to the art imitating life type thing, which is really art imitates art when you really break oh, it down. For sure. For sure. Getting into the the new album, the artwork is pretty badass. Can, <laughs> what can you what can you tell me about this? Yeah, who is that guy? Uh, his <laughs> his name <laughs> his name's Matt Sticker uh, with two K's. Bargain bin blasphemy. Yeah, bargain bin on blasphemy on uh, Instagram. He's a he's a dude who does he generally does like uh, I guess like death metal bands and like more like extreme like super extreme kind of stuff. Sometimes his stuff's like gory or like kind of cartoony. And but he he's done like uh, just straight like oil paintings and like uh, like painting stuff. And I just figured that like his painting style would would work perfectly for what uh, I had in my mind. And then I just hit him up. And then like literally within less than like three days, he are he like. Like got my concept perfectly and he ran with it and then like it was like actually the quickest part of the process like less than two weeks later he had this like insane cover and I, <laughs> it was like it was mind-blowing actually how how awesome it came out compared to where, what my expectations were not of him yeah. as an artist but just like getting my idea onto paper you know so it was pretty awesome for sure and yeah, doing death metal the death metal art and then uh i love that guy's artwork but i was like ah well we don't need death metal artwork but then he did this beautiful beautiful thing <laughs> right yeah i'm looking at so, it right now never judge him. it's so interesting because there's so much going on you've got the kind of like the druids in there in the hall that's in the cave that's surrounded by this giant forest and then it looks like a blood river coming out of it. Yeah, it's it's funny that uh, we didn't know, we didn't realize that the PR guy from the label was like releasing that cover out to people. So we were kind of like, wait, what the hell? I mean, it's it's yeah. fine, it's cool, but <laughs> we were just like seeing it online, and we were like, wait, how did this <laughs> just happen? But I mean, it's a good thing because like. I was going to yeah. release it early anyway because it, it's so chill. But yeah, it, it's the the concept is just um we didn't really have know what to do, so I just picked 
like the lyrical themes from a few songs and then i just i knew i wanted it to be in the woods so then i just we just kind of mashed like two or three of the ideas from the lyrics into one into like one insane image and uh yeah it's it's wild man it's really it's really cool for sure I, i'm completely digging it uh, so again you know now with how everything in life is different for musicians what do you have next are you already starting to write new stuff yes yeah we we're already working <laughs> yeah i mean it's like a like like you said it's all we can it's all we can friggin' do at this point. Got. Um, so yeah, we're already starting our next. What were you saying, Pearson? Well, I was just saying we have like two new songs we've been working on. Um, yeah, three, so. and they're fucking sick. Yeah, is it three? <laughs> no, it's two. Uh, I ha- I have like two and a half, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, two and, a half, two. two and a half. Um, yeah, I mean that's all we could do is just keep on doing, keep on like pumping stuff out. So hopefully, I kind of want to do another EP. I don't know about doing another whole full length right off the bat, but that's what I have most most interest in doing is like four or five songs. But you know that's probably a little ways off. Oh, for sure, because you haven't even got the 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 full length out yet. <laughs> so yeah. for sure, it was interesting because a few weeks back. Lips from Anvil was on the show, and he made a comment about he always they always release their albums at the beginning of a year, like in January, beginning of February type stuff. And by the time the next year rolls around, it's almost as okay. if it, they don't remember the album. Mm-hmm. And I've I thought it's like you know that is so interesting how in a world in the world we have come to where music started out as releasing singles and then went to album oriented and here we are you know 60 years later almost 70 years later going back to singles again because <laughs> people releasing uh two song singles they they release an ep try to push a lower number of songs i feel like uh if you're a band that puts out a lot of music um it's easier you know and it gets it out there quicker as opposed to us waiting to have another 40 minutes of music it's like i'll have another 40 minutes of music by the time that those four songs are out so it's like i feel like as long as you're you have the intention of doing a full length then like you can get away with doing smaller formats in in the in between you know for Um, sure but that's funny that he it's funny that he said that though because it's like i mean how many albums does anvil have at this point so he's like he's like uh uh you know he's a professional at writing a whole album and then instantly probably forgetting it because he's on to the next thing you know it's oh i totally i totally get that though because i have to since we're doing these new songs i already have to like sit down and remember the songs from the ep or remember the songs from the the album that's not even out yet so it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, okay. like, uh, you gotta teach. Like- you gotta teach me. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I think the the accessibility of like the internet too, I feel like makes people appreciate smaller releases now because everything's like at your fingertips. So if you're really digging a band, you follow on Instagram or Facebook and they just release like a two song release or something. You can just check it out real quick and, you know, move on to the next thing. So I yeah. feel like the internet kind of sh- like has made people appreciate singles and smaller releases for sure. You know? Yeah. It's, it's definitely, <laughs> it's definitely shifted like, we were talking about earlier it shifts the uh attention span so if you can kind of just keep peppering people with stuff and i you know i guess that's the best strategy there is right for sure well and i think in pop music it hit that's where it originally had started going back to the singles about 15 to 20 years ago and then metal took its place where we brought back cassettes we brought back the seven inch singles again where you know a lot of bands unless you were hardcore you know you didn't really have metal seven inch singles during the 90s and early 2000s yeah yeah for sure so for sure awesome stuff all right i'm gonna drop these sponsor segments in here really fast so hang out we're coming right back with blazing right welcome to the night you think you know night demon then the night demon heavy metal podcast is for you step into the darkness as we peel back the curtain to give you an unprecedented all-access look into the mind and the heart of the demon we're talking band history song analysis studio anecdotes stories from the road it's everything a diehard night demon fan could want and more this is the only place to learn the inside scoop the deep dive trivia the untold tales from the band members themselves and those closest to the night demon story need more 
the sacred Night Demon Crypt will be pried open to reveal demo recordings that have never before seen the light of day. All with in-depth commentary by the band and the people who were there for the writing and recording process. This is a gold mine, a treasure trove of all things Night Demon. Head over to nightdemon.net or wherever you listen to podcasts. I'm going to shift gears here on us. Yeah, Do shift it up. up. All right. Do it. I'm going to consort the... Uh, the questions here and i like to ask general profile questions of all the guests that come on the metal forge just because i like to understand people because Mm -hmm. they're seeing watching the news these days there's so many motherfuckers that i don't understand (laughs) 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 so i like to ask some general profile questions of you of all the musicians that come on because i like to know what make people tick this is dicey (laughs) 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 what new skill are you currently learning Oh shit! Oh, I thought you said scale. All right, skill. Uh, trying to trying to stay awake after after a day of work. That's the skill I'm currently trying to work on right now. Right on. <laughs> what about you guys? Um, John's got into Bitcoin I'm, recently. Tell him oh, about yeah. Bitcoin, Johnny. No, nah, I don't. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm making money off of cryptocurrency, but let's not that's not the skill that matters. I'm I am learning how to make Italian sauces at home though. Nice. Yeah. I'm becoming a saucier of sorts. Hell yeah. I uh I really can't think of anything. Sorry. No, it's all good. Yeah, he's not he's not making he's not learning shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really for, he's he's going to school, but he He's in classes right now, but he's not learning. He's not learning shit. Oh, yeah, I guess I guess I, I, I guess I'm I guess I'm back in school too, actually. So yeah, hey, you guys are both fucking in school. Aren't yeah, you? we're both in school currently. Wow. <laughs> if you followed your dream as a child, what would you be doing right now? I I wanted to be a musician, so I guess I'm kind You're of happy it. with it now. <laughs> Living the dream, baby. That's right. I wrote some weird shit down as a child, so For I think sure I, I wrote I wrote like that I wanted to be a Mormon so I could have multiple wives. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely don't want that anymore though. I did. I wrote that down. It's fucking weird. Uh, I guess I I guess I'd be like a like a scientist, like working in a lab with like different like color like beakers and shit. Right on. Right. On. I, was, I guess I was kind of a nerd. I was kind of a nerd. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I I had the scientist thing too. I got you. Yeah. Right. Hell yeah. What was your favorite TV show growing up? Um, Pokemon. Pokemon was Sim- The Simpsons. Pokemon, The Simpsons. Uh, I think everybody's The Simpsons. Though. Pokemon's. I feel like I had. I feel like I had so many. Uh, uh, Family Matters. I was a big Urkel dude. I was a big Urkel guy. Yeah, Urkel is. You that's know, a good one too. Out of new, out of uh, younger bands, you are the first one to say an, an actual live action television show. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Who do you wish yeah. you never saw live? Uh, I saw this punk band, Moderate Liquidation, and they sucked. <laughs> I was very. I liked them a lot, and it was disappointing. Uh, I saw um I saw this band called Acid Mother's Temple once and they were like really fucking bad. Like I don't know. I I don't mean to talk shit, but like <laughs> they're live <laughs> like live they were just not good. It was just uh, like a, it was like a bad movie or something. Ah, that's hard. Man, my list is like fucking endless, dude. I can't even <laughs> I, I you have that I can't many think of like you a... wish you never saw live. <laughs> Yeah, I I've been on a quite a bit. I've been on a quite a few tours that you're just like, oh god, I dude, I can't think of like a bigger one off the top of my head to be honest. Name name one off that the last Crazy Bull tour, dude. I don't, I couldn't even the, tell the you band one. that opened for us in Providence or some shit. I forget the name. Of it. I couldn't see of bands. You guys hate everybody. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I mean, you know. I, I'm not gonna... every band we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> every band I have to play with sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> what is the uh, best advice you've ever received? I don't think I've ever gotten any good advice. <laughs> <laughs> I can only think of the bad advice. Yeah. yeah. Which that's yeah. The, see that's the thing. You know, I usually ask what's the the worst advice you've ever received. Ah, dude, I don't think I've ever had someone just like sit me down, put the arm on the shoulder and just give me some straight up like wholesome shit i can't think of anything um i don't know what about you pierce i know you got some shit no nah, nobody's ever talked to me like that in my life <laughs> <laughs> nobody's okay. ever given us any advice right on i guess uh 
Yeah, I don't know. I think my the best advice that I got is just by observing people who did bad things, and then that's advice. That makes sense. Yeah, I can see that's, that. That's good. <laughs> that's good right there. What food can you not stand? Mm. String beans. I fucking hate them. What the fuck? Fuck you. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I love string beans. I just had them. No, nah, they're not bad. I don't know. Just saying. Uh, there was this one food. I forgot what it is, but I don't like it. <laughs> I feel like if I had fish eggs, I feel like that would probably be the worst food. That's caviar. Yeah. I could have. <laughs> it sounds it's like good. it would be so bad, though. Like little fish eggs. I don't know. <laughs> Cat- Catherine, what's that food I don't like? Oh, my God. Um, I don't know, man. It's a hard one because there's, there's a lot of food that I like that I can't eat because it just makes me like fart a lot. <laughs> Yeah, broccolini <laughs> makes me fart too much, so I don't like that. Like baby broccoli, right? <laughs> if you boil it down, I do. I like the way it tastes, but if I eat it, yeah, same thing. It makes me fart a lot. Sabbath or Zeppelin? Sabbath. Oh, uh, definitely Sabbath for sure. Yeah, definitely. What do you collect? Uh, vinyl records. Yeah, same. I collect vinyl too. I I do, but not not nearly as much as them. Right on. That's pretty. That's pretty and much knives. the only thing yeah. I collect yeah. on. A, on a bigger scale, on a mass scale, right? As yeah. records, as records, for sure. I mean, that's a it's a collectible market. I'm one of those ones where I, even if I don't like all of the albums from a band, I have to buy and collect every album Ooh. from the band. That's a that's a slipper. That's dangerous, right there. <laughs> right, yeah. depending on who it is. <laughs> uh, I mean, and when it, I, my mine personally doesn't necessarily go. To like, I gotta have every single single release as well, because you know if you're collecting Metallica, they've got fucking like oh, seven no. singles off of the last nine albums each. <laughs> you know, they've only yeah. had ten yeah. albums, so <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't get into that extreme. Like if it's got yeah, cool, yeah. if it's got cool artwork like Creeping Death or something, yeah, I, I would get it, but. But album wise, uh, but yeah, for me, if it's like a, a like a bazillion singles now, if it's the albums, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I'd like to collect uh, Motorhead's discography, like all their not their singles, Jesus Christ, but all of their albums. I would eventually like to get on vinyl. Oh, for but, sure. Uh, yeah, weird. Uh, I can't do that all like you know anytime soon because I would break the bank. Obviously, what is your getaway from music? Hot uh, pubs. Can you say hot tubs? Yeah, dude. I don't know. I'm always trying to find out. <laughs> trying new hobbies. Going shooting, going riding my bike that I just got. Uh, I just got a bidet. What is it? <laughs> Anything. <I'm> sh- <laughs> oh, my gosh. The one escape. <clears throat> I like shooting, too, though, actually. <laughs> I went to the range today. Like, again. <laughs> For sure. Um, eating food, cooking food. <laughs> right, right. I love to do that. What is something you've always wanted to do, but you're not coordinated enough to do? Uh, like shred solo. Like just fucking just go like ham. But I, I don't think I'll ever be like I practice a good amount, but I don't think I'd ever I don't think I'm just physically ever going to be able to do that. Like I can blues solo and shit pretty well, but I can't really like sweep solo and stuff like that. I don't that's know. That's how I play. That's how I feel about playing guitar. Yeah, sweeps are overrated though. You don't want to. Yeah, they are. I don't I think can, I would ever I could use play it. bass. My fingers make sense for playing bass, but playing guitar would never make sense for my the physical structure of my fingers, <laughs> and, and I guess my brain as well. It just doesn't make sense. I, I tried. No, I can I can get behind that because you know cool. I. I like to think that I'm an I'm a pretty decent bass player, but I'm a ter- mm-hmm. I, I'm an okay <laughs> like eh. or singing and playing bass. Can oh, you do yeah. that? Can I? Yeah. Yeah. Well, for the most part. <laughs> some Lucky people, you. some people would say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lucky you. Huh? John, Johnny is not a multitasker. I can't. Hey, I get it. One thing. I get it. Yeah. Big question here. What is your most is unpopular this- music opinion? Oh my god! I feel like I have so many. Most unpopular music opinion? Yes. Oh, eh. I don't know. Um, <sighs> it's hard. I feel like this isn't an unpopular opinion. I feel like I have a lot, but I I really don't like. I hate Dave Mustaine's vocals. I feel like that's pretty generally. <laughs> that's generally accepted, though. I, I hate his vocals. Um, I agree with you on that. For the degree of they come second to the to everything else in the band. Yeah, I disagree with that, but uh. 
<laughs> I think he mumbles. It's just like, yeah, I, it just to me it hurts the band, even though they're so good musically. It hurts. It hurts my like pleasure of them. But I like about, Tiny Tim. That, that's your you like Tiny Tim? That's your unpopular music opinion. Doesn't I every, don't know? Do people like him? I don't know. D- doesn't everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you Pearson? Uh, I don't know. I'm trying to think, man. I mean, I know you guys like Kiss. I never really cared about. I, it's not like I dislike them. I just never really cared about Kiss. And I know, like everybody, a lot of people like them. So I, that's an unpopular opinion. <laughs> I, never mm-hmm. into, I never got into them, motherfucker. <laughs> there. Good to know, bruh. Uh, right. Looks like we're looking for a new guitar player. <laughs> All right. <laughs> His career is over. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, who do you lean on outside of the band for a neutral opinion? Hmm. Nobody, really. Yeah, fuck them. Uh, no. I don't know. Uh, I don't think there's anybody. Do we? I don't know. Nah. I feel like uh, I, I like show other friends that aren't into it, but now nah, I really only care about what these dudes think about it or what I think about it. Yeah, I'm not really worried about. I don't really like heat check any of my music before I show it to these guys. So well, no, I think it's just us. Yeah, it's just us. <laughs> right on. No, I mean sometimes that. Hey, sometimes people will sit there. Oh, I show my wife or you know my best friend, and hey, that's totally cool. You know, you're doing I mean, my it. wife loves everything I do, no matter what. <laughs> she loves it and supports me, so she's biased. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's so Can't good. Trust them. All right, here's some words from the sponsors, and then we're going to come back. We're going to get some final thoughts from the guys in Blazing right here, and then we're going to jam the fuck out. Hey guys, Wesling Steve of the Wesling Steve Show here. Uh, so if you're currently listening to the Metal Forge with Mark Jackson, then you understand that Mark Jackson has a pretty discerning taste when it comes to music as a whole. You also understand that he has a discerning taste for professional wrestling, just like me. The, my show is called The Wrestling Steve Show. Uh, I talk about modern and classic pro wrestling in a completely unbiased, unfiltered way. Be sure to check me out on all available podcasting platforms. That is The Wrestling Steve Show. And I am the host, Wrestling Steve. Just remember, uh, like like Confucius said, uh, man who goes through turnstile in Thailand uh, is going to Bangkok. Pro wrestling. Hey, are you all in a band? Do you need merch for shows? By now, I'm sure you've seen all the Metal Forge patches that are available, along with many more. Well, the printer I use for those is UKR Patcher. Check them out on Facebook and Etsy. They do awesome custom work and for extremely affordable prices for any band budget. Check them out at UKR Patcher on Facebook and Etsy. All right. Yeah. <laughs> got a few more questions here. What's your biggest pet peeve? Slow walker. Uh, the fact that Johnny smells like old cheese all the time. <laughs> oh god, uh, this is another well, one. I Pearson, have an endless list. When of... Pearson forgets every fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, I guess him. mine is like <laughs> better bring my backpack to next practice. Yeah, I know. I know Pearson he doesn't mean. I know he doesn't mean to do this, but yeah, like forgetfulness <laughs> and like when you gotta say shit like a thousand times, that really drives me nuts. Yeah. Oh. Right. <laughs> oh. That's so. not just a that's not just a shot at him. That's not just a shot at him. That's a, just a general pet. Peeve. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. And I don't smell like cheese. <laughs> For the record. It's like an old boot. More like an old boot. Oh. <laughs> no, I smell like I smell like gap in nineteen ninety six. Nice. You kinda do actually. <laughs> like leather. Yeah. Like shoe leather. <laughs> Speaking of which, denim or leather? Uh, we're a denim leather. man. I feel like. Oh, never mind. I'm a denim <laughs> I, I guy. Think leather. Yeah, I'm a leather. I'm a leather. Yeah, guy. I'm a denim guy. I'm a I denim don't wear guy. Leather pants. I wear denim guy. I'm a denim guy, but this 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 next winter coming up, I'm definitely flexing for some leather. Right on. I, I want a pair of leather pants. Yeah, you definitely need some leather pants for sure. <laughs> I'm forty. In forty size waist leather pants. <laughs> yeah, so anybody out there listening, uh, get with him and get him some. <laughs> forty waist, forty by thirty two. I have to go to Walmart to get pants. It's very hard for me. Right. I have long legs and a long waist. What album is a, a complete playthrough for you? Complete playthrough. Oh, Somewhere in Time by Iron Maiden. 
Man. For me, it's Jim's least favorite Bathory album, or second, not nah, it's not your least favorite. I, I just know you talk shit about it. Uh, is um, Hammerheart That's what... or uh, Twilight of the Gods by Bathory? Sorry, Don't... I get the two mixed. I was gonna up. say Hammerheart's kind of the best one, but um... <laughs> Twilight of the Gods for me. Man, this is like a. I have so many of these. Uh, I guess uh, Screaming for Vengeance is like the first one that comes to my mind because from when I was like a little kid, just listening to that all the way through, like a lot, a lot. Definitely. Priest Screaming for Vengeance, yeah. It seems like the people with uh, the Priest deal is like, it seems like they really fall right there on that line of either Screaming for Vengeance or Defenders of the Faith, which both are good, but most of their fan base, it's either or. And I think that's really funny. <laughs> yeah, I have to go screaming for... I mean, they're both equally amazing, but I feel like sometimes it comes down to, like, what's the one you had when you were, like, 13, you know? Right. And that's the one I had, you know, so... Well, I personally think Screaming has a better album cover. The uh, Defenders of the Faith kind of looks like the the uh, the Thundercats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which it's I was the always strongest a, one. No, which I was always a Masters of the Universe guy. So uh, I like. I, I, I choose. If I had to choose, I would choose Defenders, especially the album cover. Oh, listen to him now. <laughs> listen to him now. <laughs> Is this more artistic looking? What? I mean, like shiny. Yeah, but they kind of shiny. But they kind of repeated the screaming cover with firepower. So uh, that's true. That's they that's cool. Did. They did. <laughs> All right. As always, check out Blazing Right in the links below. Bandcamp, their Instagram, their Facebook page. Buy their EP that's out on there now. And in May, buy the new album that is coming out. Because I guarantee it's going to fucking rock. For Hell sure. yeah. Do you have any shout-outs yeah. you want to give to anybody before we leave here today? Johnny. Pierce. Or, yeah. Uh, <laughs> shout out to, uh, I just want to give a shout-out to Blaze from Shadowland. He gave me body image issues. Uh, because he made fun of me in the pool when I wore a uh, wife beater. But after that, my wife and my family and my grandma, Jim and Pearson and Haley. Yeah, shout Jim. out to Will for uh, recording our album. Will for well, mastering our album. our album, not recording it. But. Uh, and yeah. Richie Rabbit. Yeah, Richie Rabbit. He recorded the album, actually. Yeah, Richie Rabbit. Richie Rabbit, bro. He put his heart and his soul into it. We really p- pushed his limits. We pushed his limits. pushed his brain capacity, and he, he showed out for us. So Richie Rabbit, and uh, you know, with our shit, yeah. And that's pretty much it. Right on, right on. So final question. Then this has kind of became a a staple point here on the last question of the show because I think it's pretty cool. What album changed your life? Kill 'em All by Metallica. Yeah, probably. Ride the Lightning or Ride the Lightning or like Rain and Blood, probably. Right on. Uh, yeah, for me, it's going to be the same thing I was saying. Uh, nah, probably uh, Detestation by Gizm because that was the first band that I liked that had any metallic edge to it. Definitely. Super fucking random. And then after, I didn't even listen. It was I didn't even listen to Metallica, you know? <laughs> What are you saying, dude? <laughs> You're psychotic. <laughs> <laughs> who, who is that? Who's that Metallica band? What? <laughs> never who the heard. Fuck's Metallica? Tried never, to cool guy him. Yeah. Ne- never heard of them. <laughs> are, are they? No. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have listened to Metallica. You know. Oh, um, okay. Who? Who's that Metallica band? Are they? Anything, yeah, I was are just they anything cool like guy. Megadeth? <laughs> yeah. Well, people in Long Island, they don't like they don't like Metallica. They like Megadeth. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they hate Slayer. Don't get me started about that. <laughs> That's so funny. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> oh, shit. They love Megadeth and they hate Metallica. <laughs> right. <That's laughs> it's true too. Johnny James Pearson, thank you guys so much for coming on this week. This has been an absolute blast. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Thank you, it's, man. It, I, I totally dig relaxed episodes where you can just sit back and laugh, and I feel like I've got to laugh so much at, in this show <laughs> because it's been so fucking fun. <laughs> so, Hell yeah, dude. From the EP, what would you like me to play out for you guys today? It's up to you guys. From the EP, da- Diamond Dagger would be cool. Yeah, Diamond Dagger would be sick. So, you heard these guys from Dolce Bellum and Expertis from Blazing Right. This is Diamond Dagger. Oh, 
Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into the Metal Forge this week. I really appreciate every last one of you that listens. But before I go any further, I do want to tell you that we do have a Patreon page here. And there's three tiers. There's the Down and Dirty Dollar tier. It's just a buck. Hey, you're not going to miss a buck. Nobody does. Then there's the $5 Showstoppers tier, which you get a patch, stickers, whatever we have that's in that price range. And then there's the $20 a month Master, where you can get a t-shirt, any size, any color of the Metal Forge logo. Fuck yeah. That's awesome stuff. Oh, and by the way, if you donate on there, guess what? You get the show two days in advance from everybody else. Thank you all so much. It's patreon.com slash metalforgeradio. Check it out and donate today. I love you guys. Thank you. <laughs> 